Jersey's own Zach Gelb. Or maybe it's Pennsylvania. Anyhow, it's one of the two, I'm pretty sure. The Zach Gelb Show continues on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. 417 from the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. The NFL regular season hasn't even started yet, but it's a very busy football Friday right here on the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. The Eagles make a trade today. Jordan Matthews is going to Buffalo with the third-round pick. Ronald Darby coming over to the city of brotherly love. You also have the Ezekiel Elliott six-game suspension for the domestic violence situation, and the Giants do commence their preseason tonight up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is football season, so I always love talking to Charles Davis with the NFL on Fox, and he's kind enough to hop on board with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. Charles, appreciate a few minutes. Thanks for the time, and how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Zach. Good to chat with you again. Well, always fun to talk to you. So let's first start off with the Eagles. Uh, We've been debating all week Jordan Matthews, Nelson Aguilar, but now uh, Jordan Matthews is going to Buffalo with the third-round pick for Ronald Darby. Uh, Your thoughts on the trade that Howie Roseman did execute today? Well, it tells me a few things of what – I feel like it tells me a few things what the Eagles are thinking. Number one, they wanted to get better on defense. They needed more defensive help. Ronald Darby provides that. Number two, Nelson Aguilar – they they pushed their chips to the middle of the table on him, haven't they? Because he was a first-round pick who's been pretty disappointing along the way. Reports have been really good about his offseason, his preseason work thus far, able to work out as a slot where Jordan Matthews made his, made, made his presence felt in a really positive way for Philadelphia over time. So they feel like he can take up that slack. You've got, you know, obviously Alshon Jeffrey joining the team now as well. And a chance to get a defender like Darby, another corner, because you can never have enough cover guys. I think for Howie Roseman and crew, that was irresistible. And it also, again, as I said, it tells me that they believe in Aguilar. And that's going to be a big storyline as we watch this season, I believe, because to date, it's been a struggle for Nelson Aguilar. So if he breaks out and becomes that number one pick that they drafted, then this trade is a really, really good one, I believe, for Philadelphia. If he does not, then, then Darby, Ronald Darby's going to have to, to carry the mantle and have a monster year on defense, especially if Jordan Matthews plays really well in Buffalo. I've been to the NovaCare Complex many times during training camp and OTAs, and you do see an improvement in Nelson Aguilar, but I'm still very skeptical of him because of the past two seasons. And until he shows me he could do this two games in a row, I don't have confidence in him. Why do you think the Eagles have so much confidence in him? Well, the only thing I can go off of is the outside view, and again, not inside those doors. But those coaches and, and you know, and their administration must feel that somehow Nelson Aguilar has turned a corner, or they feel like he's going to prove them correct in the coming season. Because I think you raise a good point. So thus far in his, in his career, we've seen flashes, but we haven't seen the consistency. I did a game last year when they were playing Cincinnati, and they were just talking about if he could just catch the first pass, you know, get off to a good start, you know, that sort of a thing. When you're, when you're trying to do that, trying to get a player off the schneid that way, that tells you how fragile his confidence is. Well, in this offseason, in this preseason, they must feel it's built up to a pretty good area, and the need to pick up another defender and to pick up a corner. They feel like it was worth all of that. So we shall see going forward. It's going to be a big deal because he, Jeffrey, all the receivers that are in camp there, they have to pick up their play and help out this young quarterback that they have, Carson Wentz, because I think he's got a chance to be special. And if those receivers can come along with him, then look out. Because I think that this, I think Carson Wentz, I'm a big believer in him from having watched him last year, been around him, watched his work ethic in the offseason, watch how he's made you know, improvements plus the way that the Eagles have coached him. Head coach is a former quarterback. Offense coordinator, former quarterback. Quarterback's coach, former offensive coordinator in the NFL with a plan in place on how they're going to do these things. I think it has a chance to match up. But boy, oh boy, if you're Nelson Aguilar right now, they've told you, they believe in you. Now he has to prove it. With this trade, though, I understand the trade. I'm not overly in love with it, but I do like the trade. I don't think it's a a guaranteed lock for either team. You know, the Bills, they do get that third-round pick. Matthews is an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. But explain this to me as we're talking to Charles Davis, NFL on Fox. 
Uh, Darby, we all know how good cornerbacks are and how valuable they are in this league. Uh, Pro Football Focus in 2015 uh, had him as the uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's 23 years old and not a free agent until 2019. Why did the Bills give up so early on a 23-year-old cornerback? That's what seems a little bit odd to me about this trade. Yeah, and 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 I'll, I'll take it one step further. In the same day, they traded Sammy Watkins, who's a young receiver that was, of course, drafted in bizarre the first day. round. Huh? It's a bizarre, bizarre day. day. All right. So, so I, now I come back to okay, what has happened in Buffalo in the off season? Rex Ryan gone, Sean McDermott in. All right. A general manager, uh, okay, gone. Doug Whaley, Brandon Bean, new general manager in. To me, this is this is like a reset button, and. It's almost as if, they, not almost, I feel like they've evaluated these guys and said, yeah, they're good, they could be this, they could be that, but it's almost like they wanted a different sense around the team. I'm not going to say locker room because that makes it sound like these are bad guys. I don't know, I've heard nothing to say that they are, but it's like Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean said, let's get some value for these guys, let's get some, more, get some guys in that we believe in. And let's go from there. Because Sammy Watkins, he's been a disappointment as well in terms of potential versus production. Darby was playing opposite Stephon Gilmore. You talk about the, you look like they were locked down at the corner for a long time. Gilmore's now in New England. Darby, of course, now making the trek to Philadelphia. They did pick up EJ Gaines, I believe, from the Rams in the, in a trade, in the trade there that they got for Watkins. And when healthy, EJ Gaines has far outplayed his draft status. I believe he was a sixth-round pick. He has played way better than that when healthy. So that's maybe what Buffalo is banking on. So from an Eagles perspective, what can they expect out of Ronald Darby? Because from some things I've been reading, really good in 2015 and then a so-so year in 2016. We know that it's going to help the Eagles because their corners right now are not good. But what do you expect out of Darby in Philly? Well, what you're counting on is what you just kind of laid out. You're counting on the 2015 Ronald Darby. You're counting on the Ronald Darby who – when he came out of college, the knock on him was that the potential was there, the consistency was not. He played his rookie year as if he heard all of those critics and kind of stuffed it in everyone's face because he had a big rookie year. I mean, he played really well, just jumped off the screen. And a lot of people said, see, that's the Ronald Darby we were talking about. Last year, I don't know if anyone's giving a free pass, but if you, have to, but if you look back at the season for Buffalo, it was nothing but mediocrity, right? And we kept thinking, could they break out? Could they do this? But every time you'd see a good performance, like when they whacked Arizona at home, you know, you would see them go on the road or even at home and not play very well. And again, they ended up costing Rex Ryan his job. And they didn't get big seasons out of a lot of people they needed. You know, Marcel Darius, the big time tackle, he was hurt a lot of the season. When he played, you saw flashes again. So that team was a flash team. They want to get a team that's not going to flash. Well, Ronald Darby guess what? When you've been traded, you know what the new team says to you? They didn't want you. We did. But by the way, if you've been traded, that means, you know, you've got to come and produce because, you know, we don't have to sit and live with this trade forever if it doesn't work out. So Ronald Darby, he's, you're put on notice when you get traded in this league for various reasons. He's got a chance to jump back in there and play at 2015. He's, he's, a, he's a corner with, with excellent hands the corner with good footwork and technique when he wants it but if he lets that go then he's a corner who can give up big plays and you but know, I do believe I do believe overall he's a good player and if he comes in with that 2015 focus I think people will like what they see and you know that the secondary with the Eagles is not going to get fixed overnight but you look no. at this young core now uh Darby Rasul Douglas made his debut last night Jalen yep. Mills is in year number two and then you can't forget about Sidney Jones, and who knows if he'll play this year. Since you're so good and so uh, much in depth with this draft stuff over the last few years, how about some of these youngsters in the secondary? Well, I, I like I like a lot of what they're doing with it because, like Russell Douglas that you just mentioned, he's your he's your prototypical monster long corner now. That a lot of in, in the old days we might have gone ahead and shifted to safety right away, but everyone gets hung up on the stopwatch and the speed. Don't forget with those long arms and that big body and frame, and they can redirect receivers and be in the vicinity, knocking balls away, being physical in the run game. I think I think it's a really nice move there. You know, you, Jalen Walk is Jalen Walker. You'd mentioned correct. No, um, Sidney I'd, Jones, the other one. I'd be I'd be Sidney Jones. Oh well, Sidney Jones. Listen, he was a lock first rounder. Okay, I mean he, he was a lock 
top 20 guy. Long, quick, ability to change direction very well, tracks the football well, not afraid to come up and tackle you, all the things you're looking for out of a corner. And then he gets hurt on last play. I think they actually said, can we get one more play in at his pro day? And that's when things popped for him. So you take a gamble in the second round. If you get anything out of him this year, it's a bonus. But going forward, I think that you're going to get it. You're going to get a, a player. You get a, a fir- you get a first round player in the second round. And with Jim Schwartz and his ability to move people into the right spots, to bring the heat on quarterbacks, to make defensive backs better better defenders, because you don't have to cover as long. I think that I think they're on the right track. I like what they're doing. And Derek Barnett, he announced his presence with authority last night. That's what you're looking for, those pass rushers who can get home in Jim, in Jim Schwartz's defense. Because if they do get home, apply pressure, your defensive backs automatically become better players. And that's the big key this year, because at times last year on the defensive line, we saw how good they could be, but they weren't consistently good. And they're going to have to help out that secondary this year, and they need to be consistently great. Do you feel like this defensive line, uh, with the addition of uh, Timmy Jernigan and Barnett and Long, can be consistently great this year? I think that they've got a chance, and here's, and here's why. Barnett is a first-round guy who comes at you with the attitude of wanting to prove himself constantly. Even as a first-rounder, what did people say about him, Zach? Hey, he's not a great athlete, right? He's not twitchy. He's not this. Well, he's not a tester. He's a football player. And I think we saw some of that less. I'm not saying now he's a candidate for 20 sacks, but you saw what he can bring to the table, right? Jernigan, big, strong force inside, can hold things down. He, he provides what you're looking for, right, because Fletcher Cox needs that help inside. Benny Logan had provided some of that. Here you go. Now you got Jernigan. He's got that chance to do that. And Chris Long, you're gonna put, you'll probably be a situational guy. You'll probably spot play him at different times. But his ability to play hard on each and every snap he's on the field, help in the locker room with leadership, and generate more competition within that group because they need some guys to play better than they did last year. Okay, Fletcher Cox, we can talk about all the different things they did. They, they, they used multiple blockers. They, did. they need him to be the Fletcher Cox that they saw in 2015 again. And he has that opportunity to do that. And I think that competition within that room with a guy like Chris Long stirring that up will help them get that done. All right, let's get to the biggest news of the day, and the NFLs are wrapping up with Charles Davis right now on the Zach Gelb Show. Ezekiel Elliott's six-game suspension has never been convicted of a crime, but the NFL claims they have an abundance of evidence on this one and did their due diligence. Your reaction to the Zeke suspension? Yeah, I, whenever we get to suspensions that involve domestic violence, I am just so, so hoping that they're getting it right because – if you get it wrong, meaning Josh this Brown, you, yeah, I mean, look, if you, if you put the, if you put it out there that Zeke Elliott has done these things, and it comes back that he has not, I mean, you've besmirched a, a reputation, a person's name, and as a man, that's a very difficult thing to get back, and it's hard for a woman as well if if if, they, if you know if you've said the wrong things, like if you falsely accused a man of doing something, the hard part is things still stay out there. There's that taint. So I just want them to make sure that they get it right. I know that they've researched it. They came up with their thing. But what's interesting to me, have you seen the letter back from Ezekiel Elliott's people to the, NF, from the NFL? Or to the NFL? Have not seen well, that yet. Only seen the NFL well, letter. Well, it is out there where Ezekiel Elliott's people have fired back and said that there were multiple, I should say maybe not multiple, I'm paraphrasing. There were a few factual errors in what they have presented in their case. And they said they claimed that in one particular instance where she was interviewed, it was an out-and-out lie. So they're going to appeal, and we will see where this will take us. But I will say this, six games, an eye-opener, and if you're going to give four games to Tom Brady for the amount of pressure in a football, if we're talking about domestic violence and the league's trying to get it right, then they had to go higher than that, and six would be the number. So I want to see how it all plays out. I just want them to get it right. I just don't want the wrong stuff of a guy falsely accused or a guy getting away with something he should not have. So we shall see where this will take us. And that's been the big problem here with the NFL because they have messed up on a lot of these situations. We covered the Josh Brown situation last year, and it's it's just baffling how he only got one game. And when this thing first came out as a wrapping up with Charles Davis, I thought to myself – 
the NFL probably has something that we don't know, or maybe they're just trying to be extra tough in this situation so they don't get burned in this situation again. And it seems like we're once again in another offseason going to be uh, going down the road of another litigious situation. And I'm sure that Ezekiel Elliott's going to try to uh, appeal. He's probably going to do that, and they're going to go take this thing to the fullest, I'd have to imagine. Well, he has three days to appeal, and you're right. I'm sure that's going to happen. I saw that first letter. I think it's out there. For, I know it's out there for the public. But I think that when you're talking about, you know, the criticism in the past for going too light on guys, I think you make a great point there. Four games for a, a, a debatable a debatable offense with, with Tom Brady in a football. <laughs> you know, I think the league is really looking at these things hard. Remember how Ray Rice, that didn't get handled very well. All these things are trying to get it right. They just need to be right. They need to be correct on this. And and, and, and Dallas is going to – Dallas are reclaiming or seeks people that they're not right. So let's see how this whole thing plays out. We'll end you on this, Charles Davis. The NFC East, you also have the uh, Giants who start their preseason tonight up against the Pittsburgh Steelers here in New Jersey. Uh, this Giants team this year, it all comes down to that offensive line. Uh, how do you view the uh, big boys up front for the G-men? Well, you've, uh, you've laid it out very well. Can, can they have the cohesion? Can they continue, you know, can they protect Eli? And can they get that running game going? You know, I mean, look, Paul Perkins is a guy that I saw in college. And the one thing that I always said about him when I did games was there were times when you just thought he was just kind of cruising along. And by the time you get to the middle of the fourth quarter, you realize he piled up over 100 yards. And then there was a big run or there was a big play that he would break late that would be a backbreaker for another team. He is a guy that I believe with volume gets better. Okay, so that's going to be an interesting thing to see if they're able to continue to do that with him and if that M.O. that I, I perceive in him continues to exist because they've got to be able to run the football, take some of that pressure off of them, and help that offensive line because even today, Zach, even though we throw it a lot, offensive linemen like to fire out and smack people across the line of scrimmage from them rather than retreat and absorb blows to, their, to the neck and shoulder area. Okay, They want to go out and hit people. They well, want to get that thing going. Well, hopefully they're going to be heading people forward this year and not backpedaling because we see the that's, Giants a lot of that's, times that's backpedaling. That's offensive linemen want. They want to come out and get. <laughs> Charles, great stuff. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Zach, great talking with you again. Have a great season.